So stunting is a complex process, and even with intense observation of infants and toddlers at birth, we still get a very high degree of stunting, much of which is associated with mothers. If there are stunted mothers, frequently they have stunted children as well. So this is a transgenerational issue, and it will take uh, a generation or two to grow out of this particular problem of better nutrition and health to eliminate stunting. So I think that infections uh, and stunting are interrelated in a bi-directional way. Infections and hosting of gut mi microbes contribute to stunting and probably stunting and decreased immunity also potentially increase to increase pathogens and potential stunting. So it's a bi-directional mode, in my opinion. So food fortifications can probably help in the sense that there are populations undoubtedly who are deficient in micronutrients, whether it be folate, zinc, vitamin A, and fortifications can help to at least supply those needed micronutrients. There are different populations around the world with different needs and fortification, I would think, is one of the easiest ways to provide needed micronutrients. I think with the greater recognition of the deficiencies in populations around the world that the importance of fortification as a universal strategy potentially would be very beneficial, especially since there are few studies which actually measure micronutrient status. It's believed to be that there are many micronutrient deficiencies in populations around the world simply due to the lack of adequate food intake. So I believe that there's a high therapeutic index of fortification of foods that would suggest that this could be almost a universal strategy in those resource-poor environments.